I'm gonna show you another way to solve this problem. Um, and it's delightful in how succinct it is, but you don't have to think about it, right? And um, that's why I'm gonna show it to you. So this second method is to employ all the stuff that we know from graphing, um, which we've done a lot of it in advance and extension one, right? And maybe it's not obvious to you at all, especially because this whole question is in integer land. So we don't tend to think about graphing like continuous curves and when we're talking about integers, but it doesn't mean you can't use um, What's the word I'm looking for? You can't, like what we're doing is proving something harder, as it were. If we're proving something true for like all real values, it's definitely gonna be true for all integer values because the integers are a subset of the real values, right? So, here's, that's all a bit vague, let me explain what I mean, okay? Um, I want you to think carefully, I'm just gonna sort of carry on from this point right here. This is where I'm going to pick up from, right? So I arrived at this statement and previously I proved that this couldn't possibly true, uh, be true by looking at the, um, at the cases for odd and even, for parity, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to prove that this cannot possibly be true, but do it from a graphical, from a visual point of view. That's how I'm going to do this. Now, think about how you might prove that this and this can't possibly be true, um, or be equal, rather. Uh, what does it mean when you say two things like this, in graphing terms, are equal? Um, well, if you've got two graphs, and you've got like, say here's y equals x squared, and here's y equals two x, right? And you go and you try and equate them. What are you gonna find? Um, I'd love you to post it in the chat, actually. It's not complicated. If I had y equals x squared, and y equals two x, right? And then I said, oh, I'm going to put these two together and try and show when they're equal. If you solve this thing, what are you going to find? Like what, what, do, what do the solutions to that equation mean in this context? Any takers? All the way back to like year nine. Yes, thank you, Sham. Well done. Zhao got in very quickly and well done, Angad, as well. We're going to find the points of intersection. Like we'll factorize, we'll get two x values, and you put them back in, you get two y values, right? So when you have a look at this, right, what this is saying is, or what I'm trying to prove is, there's no point of intersection between these because that's what I said right here, right? They can't possibly um, be equal to each other. That's the contradiction I was after. So we need to reason through this a little bit, right? I'm going to think about these two as exponential curves, right? Uh, because that's what, you know, the n is going to be constant and you're raising it to a power so it gets bigger and bigger. And that n plus one is also constant and then you raise it to some power. They're both exponential curves, but being that they have different bases, I'm gonna prove this visually in a second, they can only intersect once, and that's at their y-intercept. So here are my graphs, right? Here's my visual argument. It has to be good enough that I can stand on it as my reasoning, yeah? Here in green is my first exponential, and I've got this second exponential, which all I know its relationship to the green one is that it's gonna be steeper over here, right? Um, it's gonna have a larger base so it will grow faster, right? Um, over here, it's got a larger base so it shrinks faster as well, exponential decay going in that direction, okay? Now, hold on a second. Mr. Wu, you said the whole point that we we're trying to get toward was that they can't intersect, but you just have shown that they do intersect, right? But can anyone tell me, why is this actually still okay? This is still gonna land me on a legitimate proof. Even though I have found an intersection, and I was trying to show that there is no intersection. Okay, so Angad's got this suggestion, right? That, now just be careful, right? Um, what are the values that can change? I do have n being greater than or equal to one, but that just tells me that this is gonna be increasing rather than like a decay situation going from left to right, okay? Um, what's the problem here? Well, where, where is this true? And the answer is it's true when x equals zero right? Um, the coordinates of that spot are um, 0, 1, no matter what the base is, right? But the 0 is this index up here. It's this thing here, which in our original equation has to be p or q. See that? So to get these two things being equal, the only way, and this makes sense, right? If you've got different bases, the only way for the two things to be equal is that p and q both have to be 0, Okay, now I actually have no problem with P being zero, right? Because you can put that in and get something reasonable. But Q, have a look at what we wrote down, right? In our original assumption, Q 
Q can't be number one. Yes, thank you, Varen. They can't be equal to each other. But even like Q can't even be zero at all. Forget about whether it's equal to P, right? Q is here in the denominator. So it cannot possibly be equal to zero. So really, I ought to have, uh, let's see if I can fix this in an artful way. Oops, that was way too big. Uh, let's try this. That's better. Okay, let's punch a hole in it. There we go. Uh, X can't be zero for that um, n plus one to the power of Q curve uh, because then you'd have a Q equals zero on the denominator, which is a bit of a problem, right? So therefore, here is my um, conclusion. Oopsie daisy, I'm not doing the right kind of deletion. There we go. Um, the only way that these two things can be equal is if and only if P and Q are both equal to zero, as Ren already pointed out, that's a problem. And this is a problem. So you just got problems going all over, which is actually kind of what we wanted. We wanted contradictions. Um, so therefore I have what I wanted that it can't possibly be, the assumption can't possibly be true. So therefore um, it's not rational, it's irrational. So uh, I hope you sort of gained not just the solution, but the way to think about it is the key um, because that's what you're gonna need to be able to reproduce yourself when you're like, ah, oh, what tools do I have in my toolkit to solve this question? Answer. You have a lot now. That's the thing that makes the HSC so hard. Um, you have all the tools in your toolbox, which is awesome. Solve a huge range of problems, but also means you've got to rummage around in there because there's so many different tools you can um, choose from. I bet most of you probably didn't even think at all about graphing in the context of this question. Uh, but if there's anything that Mrs. Lees and I have taught you, it's that graphing is awesome and it is useful in uh, so many different places, especially, or even the ones where you wouldn't expect it.